is a moment for everything to change. We can turn the tables. We can win the day. In the heat of battle, we won't be undone. Let him come for the throne. We fight. United is one. Here we stand on the edge of greatness. Get ready, because the battle's here. We can turn the tide. We can take this. So close, victory is near. Here we stand on the edge of greatness With my warriors by my side Born ready, we can almost taste it I can't even believe the run that Omo Abyssinian has had. Across the way from them, though, world champs themselves, the reigning world champions, Luminosity Gaming, trying to find their footing for an entire year, and they decide day two world championships? Eh, why not today? They are humming. Luminosity somehow making their way back to the grand finals through the winner's bra bracket. It's the impossible dream mm -hmm. to somehow win the world championships and then do it again back to back. Can anyone stop this unbelievable squad? If you were to ask me that question on day one, I'd say maybe. If you're asking me today on day two, no shot. This team looks like an absolute mutant. They are 2 owing everyone under the sun. They have leveled up. Rin is playing out of their gourd, literally taking the pressure off Overlord for once. The first time we've seen that happen all season. This team, quite literally, is coming unglued at the seams of how much power they're just exposing. I have never seen Luminosity play better, even when they won the World Championships last year. They had a wild season through North America. They had their ups, they had their downs, but look at them now in the Grand Finals through this winner's bracket. Truly a legendary team, but can they do this twice? The unthinkable win the World Championships of Pokemon Unite. The argument you could have made in season one is there weren't that many teams invited. This time, 31 teams uh, invited, 28 showed up. LG cruising through all of them, and especially looking in a next level here in the top eight, where we had our top eight teams transcend, and we're supposed to be the best, and literally, Luminosity making them look like they're not playing the same game. Luminosity is on a different level today. There's no question about it as they get ready for this match. You can feel the energy on that stage. This is the zone that Luminosity thrives in. They feel playful in, a, in the highest stakes environment possible. They are feeling joyful. That is incredible. We see, we've seen Luminosity on stage at NEIC at the regional finals. They didn't look like this. They didn't have this energy. They didn't have this focus. They had, didn't have this level of humbleness they expected to win there they just did not they're delivering on the world stage and they're one set away standing in front of them Omo Abyssinian the APAC East Cinderella squad looking to cruise through the losers bracket and crush some NA dreams first place in their regional finals first seed from their region they came into today looking amazing and they have dispatched every single team in front of them as they clawed their way through that loser's bracket, taking down the incredible Oyasumi Makaro in that last match. Just amazing stuff. You know, they talked about earlier how they were nervous to be on this stage, how this is a new experience for them. Luminosity has been through this before. Well, this team hasn't, but they look like seasoned pros. If anyone is going to take down Luminosity, it's Omo Abyssinian. To say they're on a heater right now is an understatement. The best thing, if you're an NA fan is that Omo Abyssinian just <laughs> sent every Japanese fan into your camp because they dispatched both teams that were in the top four. They absolutely eviscerated. Step them, step them down. Omo Abyssinian is 
all momentum right now. LG's been on ice for a minute. Can they carry that through? That's the question because they have a long road ahead. They win this first grand finals best of five. They've just reset this bracket. They got to run that thing back. That's right. Luminosity has a few games to give, but of course they don't want to give any games away. Abyssinian is ready for this though. You can feel it and you saw it in their past games. They were a little shakier earlier this morning, but right now they look insane. Dupe Snacks, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a bit of a psychic. I, I thought you were a magician. Well, I'm a bit of a magician and I'm a bit of a psychic. I'm a bit of both, okay? You can do both in this world. And I actually had a pretty good feeling how this was all going to go. Why don't you take a look? And so we find ourselves here, this pivotal moment. The World Championships of Pokemon Unite in Yokohama, Japan. And this is it, what all of these regions have been battling for. The Grand Finals are upon us. What team is going to make it? I can feel a disturbance in the air, the Eos energy flowing through me. Closer, I can see something here. Closer, closer. Okay, too close, that's on me. I said closer too many times. Yes, I can see it much more clearly now. Speak to me, Thea. Sky ruins with your magic. Whoosh, oom, whoosh, sounds. Yes, I can see it. Two teams, two teams battling it out. Team Luminosity and Team Omo Abyssinian. What are they battling for? A beautiful trophy, a tiny Pikachu trophy. Luminosity, your current world champions are moving to the grand final. Omo Abyssinian will be your team making it into the top three. That is insane. This is the grand finals between team Luminosity and team Omo Abyssinian. Incredible, this will be a match for the ages. I hope you're ready, because this is the grand finals of the Pokemon Unite World Championships. Magic. A magical prediction from Spraggles is going to lead us into draft of our game number one of our grand finals for season two, Luminosity Gaming versus OMO Abyssinian. I can't believe we're finally here. And the one thing that even Spraggles couldn't predict is who's going to come out on top. It looks like it's going to be the Hoopa Band on the side of Luminosity once again. Looks like maybe Jarapson's getting a little bit target fan there, yeah. but on the other side, the Lapras. This is the second time these two teams have played against each other, so a bit of knowledge going into this specific Civic team fight. Hoopa banned away, Lapras banned away, so Rin not gonna have access to that super powered defender Pokemon. Oh, and that has been so successful already, but we've also seen some other options from Ren, many throughout the day. Of so Rin, of course, gonna be starting with that Umbreon, a great meta pick, and a highly, highly valued over the weekend defender, the Trevenant. I mean, this is so cool because I think Luminosity Gaming and OMO Obsidian's path to the Grand Finals have been very similar in terms of drafts. Picking some comfort picks, even though they're strong, but kind of avoiding some of these more meta picks sometimes and relying on those comfort spots. And both teams making it look amazing. Tempest with the Trevenant, Overlord on that Zorark. Ooh, going back to the comfort pick, you love to see it. One of my big questions is what Schwa going to be picking up eventually? Will it be the Glaceon yeah. once again? And yeah, we're just going to a lot of comfort picks that all these teams have been going for. Nothing's really been stopped from them getting it. And one of those picks that I mentioned earlier that Rin's been great on is that Zacian. Oh my word, with that Kobe pocket as well. Now, one thing that Omo Abyssinian had last time they ran this competition was the Eldegoss. This time, choosing that Clefable instead. Hopefully some big gravities will help slow down the Overlord Onslaught, but I don't know if anything is going to be stopping that player in this position right now. And great call out, Wonder Chef. It is the Glaceon from Shua. And I do have to mention, Omo Abyssinian has fought now, I believe, four wins of their last four wins against Zacian with some other diving partner.
Yeah, great meta call there by this team. Obviously, they have found some kind of answer, but do, will that answer work against a team like Luminosity the way they are playing right now? LG with winner's bracket advantage. They, of course, are familiar with this position from last year and a draft to look like it. Oh, yes, they are. This is their chance. They just need to win three games. Abyssinian has to reset the bracket as well. But of course, like I said, nobody can truly know who will win until they do. But I want to hear the predictions of who else but Spraggles and Doob Snacks. Here we are. It's grand finals time to the tens of thousands of you watching at home, to the thousands of you here in Yokohama. Are you ready? Spraggles, they are gassed up to the gills. Like I said, we got two stages. Every seat in the house is full. Everybody's eyes on Unite. You know why we're on Saturday? Because if they're on Sunday, we make every other game look a little subpar. <laughs> Unite delivering on every level. No question. These teams, no exception. They're squaring up. Game one, World Championships, Grand Finals, start now. Let's do this thing. Luminosity, your purple team. Omo Abyssinian, your orange team of the first game of our Grand Finals of the Pokemon Unite World Championships. Hundreds of teams from around the world competing, and it all comes down to this. North America versus Asia Pacific East. Luminosity, the former champions, looking to regain gain their crown. Omo Abyssinian, the upstart team from APAC East, the one that everyone believed could take down the champs, and somehow here they are. They are just buying time for Overlord to get through this central area. That's who they're going to leverage, of course, per usual, LG, to try and get into the face of the team. Luis, though, leveling up very quickly, hit their level four on time. Glaceon as well. So now they're going to be able to bully this lane a little bit, but here comes the Zora cheating down. Rin staying up there by themselves per usual. We'll see where this engagement goes, and Overlord immediately tries to dive on Luis and dips right back out. Overlord just extremely aggressive in situations like this. Here comes the bean look, a perfect <laughs> setup for Overlord, and they pick up the big K opener right here in our first game. That Phantom Log split immediately. Overlord is hungry and wants another Pikachu trophy to set right next to the first one. Of course, Rin up here, Elo in their pocket. They're going to be able to put tons of pressure, especially on this path where the War Turtle stands and the Clefable is as well. Tons of pressure being put on, but Clefable evolving means it has Moonlight and they're okay for a moment. Clefable and War Turtle evolving right there was actually huge for Omo Abyssinian. Also, we just did not have enough Aos energy on the side of that Sashi for it to move in and make a big fight happen. You can see multiple members of Abyssinian actually hanging out in their own central area just so that they can make sure that Overlord doesn't come in to try to pick up a big KO. And here they go, diving forward, trying to take out a KO on War Turtle here and score on this goal zone. Well, they're putting tons of pressure on Overlord with Rin, of course, and the Comfy just hanging out, trying to get from one player to the other to see if they can make any magic happen. Not quite in the cards this time. Omo Abyssinian doing a great job of pushing Luminosity back. Luminosity loves to just overstep those boundaries, make their way into that central area. But you can see Omo Abyssinian doing a great job picking up a big <laughs> KO on Slash. K opener to Omo Abyssinian in this one. They get a good one on Slash, as you mentioned. That's a good start for them. That's a confidence builder. You were talking about momentum. You want to keep that going in the positive direction. They've certainly done that now on the scoreboard and getting the first KO. Here we go. Overlord sitting in this top path, now running back down towards this central area, looking to see if there's any experience they can take away. All the fighting, both of these teams just kind of left these Altaria and Swablu alone. They're able to clean this up, make their way back up to this top path, and see if they can get level 9 before this first big objective. The top and bottom Reggie spawn on the map here in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, but look at Zorak getting more points in, of course. And Miva just trying to hold it down, but they know if they get too far in front of Overlord with Elo right there, they're going to go down to have this stay at a safe distance. Slash is sussing out this basement Reggie, and they're seeing where they can go. Tempest checking the bushes with that wood hammer, leaving Slash down all here by their lonesome. Finally, Rin shows up, but are they going to engage? Are they going to look for the other team? That's enough to force them off the Reggie Rock, and now all of a sudden, Rin has positional advantage. And it looks like, I mean, Luminosity is just in a great position to take. Take this right here.
was almost like Obo Abbasini didn't want this fight at all. They maybe were afraid of Luminosity right there, but they do pick up a big KO, sending it the other way after a really, really nice secure by Luminosity, almost uncontested. Yeah, and that means that they've kept up with the level race here. Now Overlord's taking out, they use their Unite move. They're gonna go down to Louise. Are you kidding me? Tons of pressure. Omo Abbasini is feeling it. Kyrios gets one back the other way on Luis Comfy. Unite comes out, but that doesn't matter. Kyrios goes down. Now Elo has to defend this goal zone. Finally, Slash shows up. They can hop on for a ride, and but there's still three players there. Is, Tre is the Tempest going to peel out and get out of there? That's the question. Yes, they decide to play it safe, and Omo Abbasini is looking good. Beautiful, beautiful play there from Omo Abbasini. And, you know, they gave up that objective pretty hard, but then they move back in and pick up this massive KO on Zorark. And then almost every other member of Luminosity starts to fall afterwards. Reggie Alecki up here in the top half, already at half, being ripped apart by Luminosity. Here comes the big secure attempt, and they are able to take that down. Nice KO by Overlord on Luis there to let that thing run in. If it hits, they have a good chance for an overcap. Nice pressure by Overlord on Miva, so they can't keep them from, ha from that happening. And now they're going to get a big overdunk if they can get the right player in the position. Yeah, they're looking for some more Aos energy right here, but they don't want to break this goal without it. Otherwise, they'd rather keep it up, keep more experience between these two goal zones rather than giving a lot of it over to Omo Abyssinian right here. <laughs> they're just looking for some points, but they're eating some Unite moves as Omo Abyssinian picks up another big double KO. It takes three players on Omo Abyssinian to use their Unite moves, but they cashed him in on the right player. Overlord goes down, and now this goal zone is going to go down. Tons of points Rain in 185 to 111. Homo Abyssinian now has the level lead as well. They have the level lead, they have the point lead, and as you talked about, they have the momentum moving into this match. It looks like Luminosity needs to get their heads back in this game. Feels like they're not giving any respect over to Homo Abyssinian, and they're counter punching extremely well every time LG moves in. Without a doubt, nice little score there by Slash. Miva not interested in doing too much. Curios gets poached to the side of Omo Abyssinian. The Glaceon shows up just in time for that KO. Curios goes down. Now Rin is caught without a partner, and there's three players that are going to pivot. Look at Tempest's positioning. They're going to look to space out Overlord. Nice wood hammer to push them and bubble them out. Jumping on top of Luis is Overlord, though. That's the engagement they want. Comfy Unite comes out as well. They're going to keep pushing. Do they get the follow-up? No, nobody goes down there. They roll block and push them against the wall, which means Rin can seal that objective, but now they're trying to get KOs back. The Glaceon's already down, but so is Overlord. Once again, amazing objective secure here from Luminosity, but these fights are going the way of Omo Abyssinian in a big way. That Leafeon picking up massive KOs and Zorark getting shut down. This is the only team that has been able to shut down Luminosity Zorark all day. Without a doubt, and it started in a weird position where Tempest was able to poach Curios to their side of the map just in time for Shua to come in with the Glaceon and get that KO. But now Rin picks up the Comfy and they're putting the pressure on. But here's Shua and Luis to rece receive them as they come across. Miva looking for the engagement. Glaceon used their Unite move as well. Nice little blade comes out. Hydro Typhoon chips it up, and poor Elo is left out to the wolf. Here comes Overlord trying to go for the save. Does there anybody can hitch a ride? Curios has to dodge out. Glaceon runs back. Luis is charging up a Solar Blade. That doesn't hit its mark. And all of a sudden, we just had a big skirmish that kind of fizzled out. Just kidding. Overlord said, what about that fizzle out? I'm here. Omo Abyssinian is destroying at the top of this game. They are winning all these fights off of Luminosity. Scoreline very, very close. Level lead, however, is heavily favored to Omo Abyssinian. One minute left until the first Rayquaza of our grand finals. And right now, this is Omo Abyssinian's game to lose. It really is. However, Luminosity is not playing the way we've watched them play all day today. I don't know if it's a strategy switch or a mentality switch, but they need to revert back to where they were. They need to flip that switch, get back to where they were, Spraggles, because this is not the same squad. That's a good point. If there's a switch, I would recommend that they start flipping it right now because they're in a lot of trouble here against Abyssinian. Moving on in, Overlord just not able to make any of their combos work. Obviously, gravity from Clefable, a huge counter. He says, counter this, picking up a big KO in this central area. 25 seconds now until Rayquaza and obviously so much matters here. This fight is so incredibly important as Slash is in a lot of trouble and it looks like they just lost their focus band before this fight. That's a, a key uh, prize for Omo Abyssinian. We're going to square up here. We got a Rayquaza in our final stretch in five seconds, Spragles, and this thing is not an insurmountable lead.
No, it's very, very close between these two teams. Someone can peel off and score, but more importantly, they are going to look to win this fight. Luminosity just seems like they can't get their fights together this game, and every time they move in, Obsidian has an answer for them. But we'll see if that continues to be the case as they start poaching Slash, pushing them towards their team, but no one wants to take this fight just yet as everyone is very okay with backing off in this moment. Abyssinian is ahead on the scoreboard right now, so they are waiting for Luminosity to throw that first punch so that they can do something about it. We see that it looks like Overlord is heading down to this Tier 1 goal zone, looking for a score. It looks like they are going to get that, and that is going to put Luminosity ahead right now. One minute, 20 seconds left. Rayquaza is being hit right here, but no one is starting this fight. As here comes Overlord. No, stopping because of the gravity, and it looks like Trevenant's in trouble. Dude, Tempest is getting low. The chase is on. Slash wants it. Glacier Unite comes out. There's Overlord trying to cut them off. They're kind of caught in the middle. Trevor Unite back the other way. Woodhammer doesn't land true. So Overlord darts back into the middle. Nobody goes down just yet, but it is a close battle indeed. Thanks. As we're moving through, the gravity is down. Slash can't pursue. Overlord's kind of caught on the backside, but they keep the pressure on. Oh, she was so low. Are they going to be able to get that KO? No, but they are going to get some points in. 265, though. The back cap was huge. Omaha Obsidian still in the lead by eight points. We have 40 seconds left in this one, and now they're trying to collapse on top of Overlord. Big Solar Blade does not find his mark. Overlord's getting low. Can they gravity them down? They dart back in. That's a big KO, Shua. Now Slash is going back, but look at the rest of Omo Abyssinian. They're trying to hold them down. Can they get their points in? They're down by 20, and they have no clue. 24 seconds left. Here comes a massive liquidation trying to take down this Glaceon. Rayquaza is already going very, very close to being KO'd right here. Who's going to be able to get the scare? Blastoise Unite move, but it's way, way, way too early as they spin in. who was putting the int and Inteleon earlier in this game, clutches it out for LG to really solidify that game one win. And Omo Obsidian let it slip through their fingers. That's not a way to dethrone the world champs. I cannot believe that Kyrgios secured that entire fight with the B button. Unbelievable. A single basic attack onto that Rayquaza. Perfectly timed. We're going to send this thing back on over to Zoinks and Wonder Chef, as you can see, booking the crowd losing it. Yeah, can we send it over to Jungle Book, actually, please? Because, yeah, the substitute player <laughs> yeah. is popping off here for Luminosity Gaming. A start for them that I don't think anyone expected in the first few minutes of that matchup. OMO Abyssinian absolutely hot out the gates, but Luminosity Gaming with some clever back caps and some great right fighting potential may bring this thing back up to 1 OLG. My gosh, look at that graph, how close it was all together. And I gotta say, we've talked over the course of this season where Kyrgios hasn't been able to pop off as much as we know that he has in previous seasons, in you know, previous games. But I gotta say, Inteleon has just been the perfect match. Yeah, I mean, NAIC and now here at the World Championships has been a completely different story for them. Kyrgios is absolutely a animal in these situations. <laughs> Only 39,000 damage, of course. Overlord with 69,000 damage. Imagine. I mean, these players are making it look clean on that world stage. Taking another look at this game number one, but how LG has earned themselves a 1-0 lead. Yeah, and just barely, to be honest. I feel like a lot of these highlights are going to be moments that were led early on by Omo Abyssinian. A lot of it, too, was Overlord going down in the early moments of the game, giving Omo Abyssinian that early lead, and we can see actually even just two in a row right there. I think disrespecting the combination, a little bit of that Trevenant lead beyond too much from Omo Abyssinian, that aggression, they are maybe the best counter dive team in the entire world currently. Those two in tandem have been shutting down aggression from teams time after time, but in the end, and right there in that situation, faint attack, you know, not going to be the success. But these final seconds were all about LG as they tried to fight to earn themselves a lead. Yeah, if Omo Abyssinian is one of the best, <laughs> if not the best team at defense in the world, stopping that dive, I have to say Luminosity may be the best team in the world. Well, maybe the best team in the world, both of these teams, clearly. But maybe the best in the world at the final two minutes of the game. Over the course of this weekend, they have won so many of their games in those final two minutes even when they're behind, just like that. And who else but Overlord is the player of game number one. Shadow Claw, faint attack, all damage all the time. And with ELO backing you up, it's the reason you can put up damage numbers like these, even if you were losing a lot of those engagements. And look, Overlord has fans worldwide, <laughs> even here in Yokohama, Japan. Look at this guy. What a face of Pokemon Unite. What a great player on this Luminosity gaming team. And wow, what a championship form that we are seeing them in today. 
Yeah, every single player on LG had, I think, kind of a hero moment in that first game. Mm -hmm. It was looking so, so good. And even the fact that they had to do all of that from behind, they still stayed solid. And on top of that, Elmo Obsidian has an amazing amount of momentum right now, going through that huge loser's bracket run, defeating a bunch of tough opponents, but LG just ready off the bat. Yeah, let's see if LG can kind of counter that early game dominance that OMO Abyssinian was able to find, or if OMO can carry that on and find a way to clutch up in those final moments. I mean, if I've learned anything from this weekend, it is that a Pack East is capable of just that. That's true. Another big uh, stat is that OMO, oh, 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 sorry, OMO Abyssinian. I can't say it. I'm so excited for them. They've won from behind the past, like, three or four of their sets, yes. which is just ridiculous. So maybe this is their plan all along. Take the first loss. Yeah, this is the game plan. Take that, LG. We already have OMO with their advantage state. Banning away Overlord Sword Arc. So do we see that Venusaur that has been the, the popular choice when Overlord can't grab it? Or maybe the Dodrio. Either way, no surprises for that Hoopa selection from Jay Rapson. They're going to grab that one immediately. Curios grabs that Inteleon. And, well, I mean, that Pokemon currently no Holloware equipped, but I think we should put a cape on it for that hero moment in game number one. <laughs> I think that's fair. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, LG just doing such a good job of taking advantage of the new Pokemon in the meta. You yeah. can see those first two picks going to Slash and Kyrios, the majority of the games that we've seen them over the weekend for very, very good reason that they have been able to make just the most amazing plays. But as expected, we're not actually seeing too much of a challenge on the other side. Yeah. We've seen a lot of comfort picks coming out from Omo Abyssinian, and the Trevenant is going to be one that I feel like is really going to be a their option every single game. Yeah, most likely. I don't see any reason for them to go away from it. And here we go. Oh. We're going to be locking in the Blast Toy. So not having their opportunity for the Lapras since they are Team Bandit, they are instead going to move towards it. And knowing that Viva has liked to play it, especially in that last game, they are going to select it for that huge Unite move. Bliss Assistance plus Hydro Typhoon. That is so much shielding for the side of Luminosity Gaming in these final moments. Yeah, and another thing is that we could see Rin have picked the Zacian, but we've known that Omo Abyss Sinian hasn't picked Zacian, I believe, the entire tournament, or at least if they did, it was like maybe once or twice that I didn't see it. And Overlord, like you called, will be taking that Venusaur. So I, again, I love that pick from Rin, being yeah. able to deny it a Pokemon while knowing that their opponent's not going to choose another one in that role that you could choose. And knowing Overlord's item build right now that we can see, we will be that Solar Beam Venusaur, and you're going to have to. When you're going up against Leafeon and Glaceon, I mean, Glaceon dealing so much damage from range, you need somebody to match up with that, and the Solar Beam is going to be there. Energy Amplifier as well for some huge burden anger moments, but Luminosity Gaming with a very late game scaling composition. Two Kanto starters on their team. OMO Abyssinian are going to be coming in with a Leafeon and a Glaceon. Two level eight Unite moves. It's going to be strong. We're going into game number two. LG up one. Let's give it to the casters. That's right. Here we are in game number two. We have Overlord, formerly the Lord of the Sword. We're going to have to see if they're the Lord of the Beam of Sword here in game number two, Dupe Snacks. Well, it's looked good whenever they've queued up with it today. You, whether it was a uh, Giga Drain Pedal Dance or this Solar Beam, sometimes Giga Drain build that we saw earlier today. I mean, <laughs> they just have to get Overlord protected and let them just shoot pot shots. So this is going to be up to Rin to level up here. They did it all day long on the Lapras. We need to see it on the Blastoise if they want to put Omo Abyssinian, their backs against the wall with two straight wins. That's right. If they get another win right here, they're one win away from being your world champions. Omo Abyssinian, your purple team. Luminosity, your orange team here in game number two. We can see Overlord heading into the central area here for Luminosity. And we can see those Evolution splitting that central area for Omo Abyssinian. It looks like they didn't even need to take it. They're already a Leafeon in the bottom path as we have a little bit of an invasion happening happening in this central area. We're going to see if Hoopa can steal away this blue buff right here, and they are not able to do it with help of, from Curios. Yeah, Curios step up. Water Gun, one of the best secures in the game, forcing uh, Overlord to actually eject through the wall. Uh, Drabin, uh, Drapsen doing a great job putting the pressure on, buying time for the team. As we look over here, because of that, LG still had, at that point in time, an Eevee. Yeah, here we go. We have Elo evolving over. And once again, Overlord being bullied here in the central area. This must be a very different experience for Overlord right now. This is normally what he's all about. 
Yeah, ELO support, Umbreon, nothing to scoff at here as they're getting in the pocket of Overlord with that experience share. Going to see what kind of magic they can make happen. And the quick little pop shot, Astonish doesn't get it done. It is sealed up by Overlord, the person you'd like to have that thing going into the top path as they are fighting to level these two Kanto starters up. And look how much time they have wasted for the side here of Luminosity. Just incredible stuff from Avicenian here. This Hoopa play has been absolutely brutal, and they've slowed down this freight train that is Overlord. However, because Curios went and helped and got the last hit on one of the central farm, they are the biggest thing on the map hitting level six. So they are going to be leading the pace for this LG team. And they're going to need that if they're going to get Rin and Overlord online. Yeah, you can see Rin just backing up right here, needing to get a lot of that experience. We see that water spout. So we know this is going to be that rapid spinning Blastoise if they can get enough XP. Obviously, we talked about this before. All the early scaling Pokemon on the side of Abyssinian <laughs> moving on with a big solar blade looking for the KO and they pick one up. They pick one up and Curious going down there is just bad news. I just said they were the biggest thing on Luminosity and all that experience just went into the hands of Omo Abyssinian. That's a great pick for them as Elo is peeling back just seeing if they need to babysit Overlord through that central area as Omo Abyssinian is just sticking to their game plan getting all their wild Pokemon on their side of the map. Yeah, we talked about this. I mean, a ton of early scaling Pokemon on the side of Omo Abyssinian. The latest evolution is level 5 for a Trevenant. However, you have multi-evolution Pokemon on the side of Luminosity, and it's going to be a little trickier for them to get the experience that they need to get online and be as impactful as we do have that level 7 Ivysaur, so we have the Solar Beam in the top path. Omo Abyssinian moving around this map very, very well. Already have the positional advantage here for this basement. Reggie Tempest taking their spot up front, looking to just horn leech the opponent away. Not too worried about the Blissey. Forcing out the Shedinja doll, though, but Curios is here shelling in damage. That's the person they want to space out. They're going to try and reset Tempest, but they can't quite make it back. Sealed up by Luis on the Leafeon, and they've been doing that all day long. Omo Abyssinian playing so well at the start of this match, and of course you would expect it given all of these early game Pokemon. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, you can see Rin, the War Turtle, staying in the top path. You can see Overlord, the Ivysaur, staying in that central area. They need this experience right here, and they recognize that they are behind. They're not going to be able to compete for these objectives the way they would like to. They need to get their levels right now, as Omo Abyssinian is continuing to put the pressure onto Luminosity. This is their first opportunity to really do some damage, and the LG game is all about damage control in this moment. Can they make something happen? No. Overlord has ticked over to Venusaur, and they take out their Grass-type counter counterpart as the beams are starting to fly and now they're able to deal with this Reggie Alecki very quickly overlord hitting level nine just in time just in time for this fight and we can see war turtle now looking for experience all over this map they absolutely need their level nine as well and now that we have this Venus Venusaur we're gonna have to see what luminosity can do now that they are finally scaled up a nice big 30 points does not go in because of a beautiful icy win but they eat a solar beam right back the other way and they pick up a KO cover them in water and then burn that stuff off with some sunlight they got it done curious goes down quickly to the slow bro but they're already down on HP to be Begin with. They're still shooting in more solar beams. The Shedinja doll comes up and they're poached to the side of Omo Abyssinian. This is the KO they have to cash in on, and they do. Unfortunately, sometimes with that Shedinja doll, you're just delaying the inevitable. You're waiting around for everyone to go, okay, <laughs> as soon as we're done here, I'm going to pick up another few KOs on the side of Luminosity. I mean, Lord of the Sword today might be Louise. That solar blade is just looking amazing, forged in the heat of the sun. Curios right here in a little bit of trouble, barely makes it out from that solar blade. Nice. nice. A check button to pick up a KO. Glaceon Unite back the other way. In trouble. No shot. But actually, nicely defended there by Elo and Slash. I cannot believe Omo Abyssinian let Curios off the hook after the eject button KO streak of two. They were so, so low. They just wasn't enough follow up or no trust in the follow up there on Omo Abyssinian. And really, Curios getting out with absolute criminal behavior. We have a slow beam here in the top path, and they are pushing this advantage. Beautiful score right here 35 into a 40 and a 49. Nice big overcap, putting them up 125 to 52. Unite Ooh. move comes out from the Venusaur right here, but they are in some trouble as Rin unites back the other way. Coverage by the Hydro Typhoon is huge. They take out the Trevenant. The Rapid Spin Water Spout is trying to find the Rings Unbound Hoopa. They just devolve down back to their tiny baby form, and now they have to scramble back. Look at all the damage that's just sitting on Omo Abyssinian. They can't really fight too well up front, and honestly, Luminosity is more concerned about the wild Pokemon. They're, they want to keep leveling up.
up, keep pushing this advantage. Finally, the focus is on Red Ice, but that Solar Beam catches three. That's and Solar Beam. <laughs> so good. So oh, massive. man, Tempest played too far forward. Elo trying to get them back onto the side and get that KO, but ultimately LG just peels back and says, let's hold tight until Curia shows up. You can see Omo Abyssinian just poking at this Red Ice right here, looking for an in on this fight. Massive stun right there from Slash as they run back towards this Red Ice. It's very, very low, secured by the Blissey. Listen, Slash is an absolute legend on this Blissey and securing objectives with an egg bomb or a basic attack or whatever tool they've got available to them is no new news. They are world champions and that's a Pokemon that they used to ride that wave to the top last year. And take a look at this play here from Omo City. Nice 40 points while everyone was distracted. Same thing happening on the other side for Luminosity as well. Blastoise scoring in this top path, bringing this game to 165, 172. Once again, so incredibly close as we are one minute away from Ray Quaza. Luminosity up one game, however. They want to make it two very, very soon. One thing you got to keep in mind is Rin has not really been a factor this game because they've just been powering up in that top path. They did join the fight for a little bit, but now they're sitting at level 12. They're at parity with the biggest things on the side of Omo Abyssinian, and Rin is ready to go to work and really unlock the key that is Overlord and those Solar Beams. I think the big question here as we move towards this fight is, are these late game scaling Pokemon going to be able to win inside this fight? Because it does look like Omo Abyssinian has definitely let their foot off the gas since the beginning of this match. They're slightly behind on score, and they're not taking as many good fights. Yeah, those Wood Hammers not pulling back Slash the way they wanted to. A nice little Phantom Force to pop them, but they're just going to eat an egg and meet back on their own goal pad as the rest of LG is peeling up. Tempest looking to make a push here. The portal's down if they want to try and score, and now the pressure on Elo's there from Evo as well. And here we go. Ten seconds now until we have Rayquaza, and they pick up a big KO oh. on Trevenant somewhat early right here. Oh. Slash looking to get another one right here. The Phantom Oh, push that's back. a huge egg bomb. Beautiful egg. No reset there. Miva's like not super low on HP, but just having them chunked is a big deal here. So is Jurabson. They have low on HP. Another portal comes up. They're going to have to take that one. And now we can see Trevenant coming back into this fight, eating a little bit of a solar beam right there, but it's a slow bro. They eat those all day. Num, num, num. As we get ready for this big engagement right here. The score line is so incredibly close. Anyone can peel off and make a big play happen at any moment. is still being chipped, but no one looking to move in for this fight just yet. The hyperspace hole sending Trevenant possibly back. And yes, Whoa, way no. too early on the Unite move as they come back in for this fight. Now that forces LG to try and take this battle. They're all over Miva and Elo tries to go in, but now they're half HP. The Glaceon chunking them. Are they going to start ripping this thing? That's the question. Half HP is Elo sitting in the middle. Curios wants an opportunity here. Are they going to find one? Miva gets jumped on by Elo. The rings are on bat on the backside. Drabson's pulling the team through. They're trying to stun them down. Rayquaza's absolutely getting melted. Who's going to take this thing? It's so low. It's on the brink. KO Shrink 2 for uh, Luis. No and they're way. Take it. No, no way. Shot. No shot. Grin would stepped up. They said, we don't need a solar beam. We just need me, baby. I'm a turtle. We're getting it done on the Thea Sky Ruins. For a minute there, I was having deja vu. I was 100% convinced that was another Intellion basic attack on that Rayquaza as points are raining in for both sides right here. But Omo Abyssinian is down 246 to 372. They need to make something happen. They only have 34 seconds left as we pick up a massive double KO in this bottom path. And it looks like it's going to be too little, too late for Omo Abyssinian as Trevenant living on a sliver and goes home to the Pokemon Center. Rin is praising everything under the sun that they were able to secure that Rayquaza because otherwise they'd be having a real conversation about that Hydro Typhoon. But that is in the past now and Luminosity takes themselves a game two and the world champions are one game away from a repeat performance. Wow. What an incredible match right here. And you can see how excited they are up there on the main stage, taking some incredible fights near the end of this match. And it just seems like everything goes the way of Luminosity in these final moments. We're going to send this thing on over to Wonder Chef and Kello to break down game two. With how strong they are in the final two minutes. Oh, Sneaky, come on the flip. With how strong they are, it's not a flip. It's not a flip. LG's now standing for last minute gamers for sure. They are just in such control of everything around that Ray Pit. And joining me this time, I'm going to have Kello, but Zoinks gets ready. 
Look, I was lucky enough to witness that from the grandstands on the crowd. The crowd was amazing. All of the oohs, all of the ahs. But can I just say, Rin has been securing those objectives. Yeah, that is a big deal. That was a tough one, too. The aggression was so strong early on from Oma Abyssinian that they really needed to fight their way back into strength, and that's exactly what they did so that they could have that amazing final two minutes as they've been having. But let's take a look at the graph. Honestly, this is what we've been seeing. It's been so close, no matter what, especially in points, and we are, I think, within 10 points of each other at a point here, and then Rayquaza. Honestly, it was just neck and neck. They were able to match each other left, right, and center. But let's have a look at the numbers here. You can see Kyrgios on that Inteleon, 90k damage. Overlord, though, Giga Drain, Solar Beam, being able to do 79k as well. On top of that, having a bit of a late start and still being able to get 79k, very impressive on the side of Luminosity. And that's been one of their greatest strengths, right? They are a team that really focuses around their power players and and they know how, when those power players are behind, to bring them back into the game. So that's what we did end up seeing just a little bit. Of course, didn't end up getting all that bad. But the ability to bounce back and then, of course, win in those final two minutes is unmatched. Which is why they're now one game away from being repeating world champions. Yes, well, that's the thing. It's all about that restraint, keeping calm, knowing what is on the line, what is in front of you, in front of the table. But as you can see here, we have the Hooper popping their ring and bound. It was just Unite, and it was so close with this Rayquaza, we didn't even know who was going to secure it. Yeah, no. Oh, oh my god, the slow <laughs> oh, Look at that! You can see everything just an inch away from actually being able to take it. But of course, what did take it in the end was that Blastoise. Obviously, the Hoopa Beam as well was so, so close to that. But when you get down to teams like this, it comes down to micro seconds. Comes down to the wire. Yes. Like a needle through a thread. Wait, what is it? A needle in a haystack. I don't know what you that know, a needle through a thread is yeah, also yeah, very yeah, difficult. Yeah, yeah. But Kyrgios, <laughs> I've been talking so much about how Kyrgios on this Inteleon has been the perfect match, leading the game in score and damage for game number two of Grand Finals. And this has been amazing. This is a mobile team. LG has been a mobile team. Kyrgios, an amazing player on so many special attackers. But being able to keep up with that speed, being able to outplay as a star player on this new Inteleon, Helion has been just beautiful. It has been beautiful, but the thing is, is it enough of a threat to warrant a ban? Oh, uh, mm, maybe, maybe for them. They're the ones sure. hovering it. Relax, yeah, yeah. relax. Yeah, okay, Kyrgios okay. is doing great. Uh, <laughs> no, it looks like we may be sticking with some of the similar options. We're going to go back to the Hoopa. The Lapras is still going to be there. These teams, they're feeling comfortable playing with what they've been playing. And I do feel like, quite honestly, that's fine. None of these games, to me, felt like they came down to a really bad draft. None of them felt like it was like, oh, we just got to find an answer. It was really just who was winning in those final moments. And so far, Far, it's been Luminosity, Luminosity, and one more Luminosity, and that's going to be two Luminosities in a row as world champions. Well, that's the thing. If they end up winning this, they're going to take that. Oma Abyssinian, though, they have a long way to go if they are to get a bracket reset. Oh, they do have a long way. They've got to win three straight, then another one altogether, another set. But we're going to have Slash start off on the Umbreon. That's been extremely strong. Tempest uh, taking the uh, the tree. We're going to have the Inteleon actually this time being picked up by Oma Abyssinian. You were asking if it was worthy of a ban, maybe more worthy of stealing. Yes, that is right. But you know what? This opens up for Overlord to take down, take the Zorak. And we have Rene picking up that Zacian. And we know that these two Pokemon have been quite a force. Oh, they have together. But like I mentioned before, we've seen Oma Abyssinian play very, very well against this kind of double dive comp in their previous sets in this tournament. And this is kind of what they go towards. Uh, I would not be surprised if we did again end up seeing maybe the Glaceon, although it's slightly different with the inclusion of the Inteleon. However, some more classic picks on the side of Luminosity. Well, that Pikachu would not have been a classic pick. Uh, <laughs> we are going to see Kyrgios, though, has to flex over to something else aside from the Inteleon. I assume maybe the Mew, maybe the Enola Ninetales looks like it's going to be the Mew. The Chandelure would have been a great choice as well, I think. But Mew, I mean, hey, Kyrgios, so well known for Mew. Now, this is the final pick. Whoa! I was going to say, Ishua, are they going to go for their bread and butter, the Glaceon? But no, they blocked down the Talonflame. And I believe this is the first Talonflame we have seen today if at all this whole weekend. 
That is a very interesting pick, but you know what? When your your entire tournament life's on the line for your entire season, you gotta try something. You gotta go with your heart, and their heart is a Talon Flame. Schwa has popped off on so many different Pokemon, even on different roles throughout this tournament. They've got one more attempt here with the Talon Flame. Will the surprise pick be enough to turn things around for Omo Abyssinian? Or will Luminosity close out the tournament and the season? Casters. This could be the last one, or it could be the start of a great comeback. Let me see what it's going to be. Here we go. Luminosity looking to close this thing out in Yokohama, Japan. Omo Abyssinian relying back on those comfort picks, those Pokemon that we have not seen in this tournament. One of my absolute favorites, the Talon Flame. I mean, we're looking at this. Omo Abyssinian has to climb to the top of Everest, and they're starting at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. That is a long way to go, and they got to start by winning three on the hop against the current world champions. And honestly, the world champions are not going to give that up. They are looking to absolutely buckle this APAC E-Squad, crush their dreams, and relive their own. That is quite a climb for anyone who does not know trenches. That's a real deep one, and that's a real big mountain here. Luminosity, that mountain, two games up. Omo Abyssinian down in that trench, zero games. They need to win three in a row to reset this thing here at the World Championships, our grand finals. Doob snacks. I mean, you can feel the energy in this room. We may be crowning our champion very, very soon. Can you recrown a king? <laughs> are, are we just going to gently lift the crown and then set it back down? Look, I if mean, I was a king, I would request to be recrowned like quite every often. Day. I would say at least once a week, put a new crown on my head, sure. You're, 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 you're worth once a day. Thank you so much. You're, well, I didn't know you part-timed as a fortune teller. It's, you know, it's like... Do you do that in between our magician gigs? A little bit, yeah. Okay, when I'm yeah. not doing magician stuff, I do fortune telling. It's a lot of palm reading, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, read hey, my palm, who's going to win the game? Okay, let me take a look here. <sighs> You're going to win. <laughs> You're going to do great. All right, I appreciate that. We're all going to win. Everybody at home tuning in is also going to win because this is the grand finals of the Pokemon Unite World Championships. Baby LG looking to repeat this thing. Omo Abyssinian again. As Chef mentioned, this could be the beginning of the greatest Pokemon Unite comeback we've ever seen. And here we go. We are heading back into our game here in just a moment. You know what I've noticed about this crowd here in Yokohama? Such a good looking crowd here in Yokohama. Beautiful crowd. Beautiful good crowd. crowd. Give it up for the crowd that looks so good. Give it up to yourself, crowd. <laughs> All right. I mean, I thought I'd be hyped if somebody would say like, hey, you look good. Little, little, little pirate rap boot there. We are getting ready for our teams to head back into this game here in just a moment. Doob Snacks, obviously, everything is on the line right now for Omo Abyssinian. They are down, but they are not out. They are down, but not out. It's all about how you pick yourself back up. We talked about momentum. Clearly, they've lost that now. They have no momentum. We need to find out what their mental's about. Can they reset? Can they pose a challenge to LG? They went with a Talon Flame in that last pick slot. You and I looked at each other and said, that's bold. Well, make it look bold. Leverage it, use it, and make us doubters believe in you right now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see something from this team. They need to pull something new out because the stuff that they've been using is not able to stop Luminosity. You know, this reminds me of that incredible run that we saw from Team Peps yep. when they started bringing out Talonflame, when they started playing these Pokemon that we did not expect to see in the championship series. That was really exciting to see them bring these out. And you saw them once they got into their comfort picks. There's just that moment where you feel like you're playing this game again. You're enjoying it. You're free in these moments. And if Abyssinian can get there, they can win. They have taken LG very, very close in all these games. These are razor thin margins until finally a moment switches over and LG is able to get a big secure. Were the two secures a basic auto attack and then a boosted auto attack out of LG? Are we actually going to see an actual move secure an objective in this game three? I think the way it's going to go, it's got to go basic attack 
boosted auto attack, and then it has to some sort of passive, okay? Or maybe a Rocky Helm. I need to see a Rocky Helmet secure Rayquaza here in game number three. All right, this just in. Every player on both teams forced to play at least two Rocky Helmets. I don't think that's unreasonable at all as we get our teams ready here, heading back into game number three. We're taking a look, of course, the draft screen is going through. We've seen this before. The picks will remain the same as we're working our way into this game three. Just want to make sure everything's above board. We'd hate to have something go sideways in the grand finals, the Pokemon Unite World Championships, of course. So let's just rebuild this thing. Let's do it right. Yeah, let's build it from the ground up, but the same. But yeah, the ground, but ground with, up. But with be better foundation, stronger structural integrity at the base, yes. but, but everything from the ground up, the same. The same. If the bones are good, the rest don't matter. I've heard that for sure. That sounds completely correct, my friend. It's true. It's a song. It's a song? <laughs> you haven't heard that song. I'm not going to get into it with you about that song on broadcast because everyone knows what song I am talking about as we have our teams locked in here. Luminosity, two games up right now. Omo Abyssinian. They are living on a prayer, and that prayer is a talent flame. I think that prayer is actually traps in on their Eldegoss. They had that cotton crash holy maneuver before. Maybe they're trying to rekindle some of that magic and say, okay, let's let's bow down to the support gods here. Let's get the Elder God into the mix and see if we can take ourselves an objective, win ourselves a game three, and start ourselves on that road to a championship. Definitely interesting, by the way, to see Curios here on the Mew. You know, we saw Luis from Omo Abyssinian on Mew earlier, and it was some lights out. You play. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that here in our grand finals. Me too. I mean, Luis has just been gaming from bell to bell, but that Mew specifically in two consecutive games was absolutely dominant. They could not touch it. But Luis says, I want to go back to that comfort, back to that leafy on and favor other things. Of course, in this game, switching the script a little bit, but to your point, shocked that Mew isn't part of that remix. Taking a look at our teams right here, you can see them getting ready for this next match. Abyssinian actually looking pretty confident, looking pretty good, loose up there on stage. We can see our crowd right now, as I said before, one of the best looking crowds in esports. What are you going to do? Gorgeous crowd. I believe in you, crowd. I say you are the best-looking crowd in esports. I love you more. I'm better. Game three, and this could be our final game of the World Championships. That's right. Luminosity, your purple team, up two games. Omo Abyssinian, your orange team, down two games. They need to win three in a row to reset this thing against the world champions who are looking to take it for a second year in a row. Unthinkable, almost, that a team could claw their way through through all of their region and then through their insane group stage here to the top eight, win every single match and make their way back to a grand finals. How is a team this good? They are luminosity. It's insane that they're doing it in such a dominant fashion. K opener goes straight on top of Rin and if they wanted to push that pressure, they would have had a decent chance. Coming in is the Talon Flame, not able to engage on that very robust tandem of Rin and Eli. And you can see once again looking for a KO here on that Phantom. You know, they remember that from a couple games ago. They say, yeah, I, I think I remember exactly how this goes. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that goal zone to you guys. That's what's amazing in the early game and getting Overlord online so quickly is they can get into these paths, try and take over. Tons of experience and a KO to Squirtle. And now all of a sudden Shua has to peel out and poor Eldegoth is left helping nobody who you supporting nobody but your own lifeline here ko streak of two and we got more points and an lg is cooking my friend lg is cooking they are in this central no, area and i don't like think this. omo abyssinian wants any part of it as they are just bullying this little squirtle my favorite pokemon how dare you overlord <laughs> I mean, this poor talent flame is doing everything it can to just get away from Overlord. We have a Phantom, a Sobble, a Squirtle, and a Gossifleur. This is an absolute nightmare on Elstream situation, and Luminosity is ready to Freddy Krueger through that whole squad. Here we go. Squirtle heading back to base right now. They just need to look for some experience. We don't yet have a talent flame on the board, so they don't have the ability to fly over the battlefield, land some of these big, massive moments that talent flame is known for as they are eating an electro ball right here just trying to pick up some experience somewhere but luminosity is chasing them down relentless nightmare on elm street more like michael myers just relentless following them to their home base whatever this is this is an 
180 slasher flick, and the victims are Omo Abyssinian, 125 to zero. They are struggling in levels, just getting crumpled on the scoreboard. LG smells blood in the water, and like a Sharpedo, they're going straight for it. They just keep the aggression. They just keep pushing forward. Nice big score stopped here by Luminosity. 132-1 right now. Trevenant finally evolves. This could be a big moment here for Abyssinian as we still don't have a Talon Flame. We have an Overlord that's ready to go to work. Finally, we're going to put the pressure on. If they take down Overlord, that's a big catch. All right, that's where it starts for them. Woodhammer's coming out. You got to pick up Elo as well. They're trying to put the pressure on, but they're able to hitch a ride very quickly on top of Slash. Mew sorts out the Eldegoss, but the pressure continues. Tempest is very low. The follow-up from Slash, the grass knot goes wide. Crash landing is the Talon Flame, but they can't flame charge back out. Boosted Auto trying to find the mark. No, they make it out. Okay, Omo Abyssinian found a way. They're getting, like I said, waffled on the scoreboard, but they got a chance. Right back in this game, when you pick up a massive KO on an overleveled Pokemon no. like that, you get right back in this. They might get another one right here as Rin is in so much trouble. No way. If you can, Rin, how do you get out of this? The liquidation finally <laughs> takes them down. And that's why liquidation is awesome. It, all, it sure hits, Spraggles. It sure hits. They got that KO, and now they're putting the pressure back on the other way. This scoreboard is looking rough, but they're finding a way. They're trying to get it done. Slash is forced out the Unite move. They get a KO for that expenditure on the Talon Flame Shula. That's huge. Mew follow up, back on the Inteleon, and suddenly LG is starting to regain that composure. Yeah, they're regaining that composure while we see the the Zoroark just crashing that tier <laughs> two goal zone here of Omo Abyssinian. What, what are these levels, Spraggles? I mean, Elo 9 slash 9 higher than everything else, but the Inteleon on the other side? I mean, LG is humming right now. This is a grand finals, but if you asked, you'd say this was a scrim block. What is going on? This is absolutely insane. If you're just joining us, I'm going to do my best. Rihanna, where have you been? 228 to 5 as Lumina is looking to become your world champions once again in an absolute <laughs> dominant performance right here. Omo Abyssinian so far behind, but you can always catch up if you can pick up a couple big KOs. I just oh. don't see where they are because Luminosity is taking them all. 36 to 5. Luminosity, the last hope of NA, is looking to say, na, 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 na. Keep hey, going. Hey, hey, goodbye. That's right. Incredible stuff here from Luminosity. I mean, this oh, come on, just, dude. I, I, I don't know what to say at this point, except that Luminosity is dominating this game. If you were worried about what they were going to do here in the World Championships, I don't know if you need to worry too much longer. Omo Abyssinia is not <laughs> out of this thing, but it feels like they are so far away, and the World Championships are slipping through their fingers. Technically, they still have four minutes and 20 seconds. It's looking bleak, though, as more KOs are just stacking up, raining in. If they can get Overlord again, again, that's where it's Huge, begins. huge. That's, that's where it starts. Getting ELO as well is big. Let's take a look at the levels here. That just brought them up, and Teleon at least to parity with the highest no. on LG, and they're scoring no. the goal goals of the level of no. disrespect. Rin brought it. <laughs> Rin brought the Uber Eats and tried to deliver it on the doorstep. Didn't quite come through. Sealed up by Trevenant. Okay. They're making moves now. Tempest is seeing Slash is getting low. Solar Beam comes through. Kyrios is peeling back. Looking for another target. Prevents the reset there. So 336 to 22. Omo Abyssinian is trying to find opportunities. Omo Abyssinian is fighting their way back in this game. Stopping that massive score there from Rin and then taking that bottom objective. Level wise they are not looking that bad here Dupes next. Points wise uh, it could be better. Correct. But, I mean, when we get to the final stretch and you're talking about hundo burgers, you can rack those up like Jughead and eat all day long and get enough to overcome this lead. What Luminosity needs to do is not hemorrhage everything back into the hands of Omo Abyssinian. Omo Abyssinian, got to make some plays. Yeah, it's definitely not over for Omo Abyssinian. I have lost games. I was winning harder, so it's definitely possible right here. As we see a nice big Kumbay Unite move, able to keep Zoroark healthy right here. Up 387 now to 22. Luminosity putting themselves in a position where even if they lose Rayquaza and they lose some big KOs like that right there, they can still win 
this game on score. They are way, way up right now, Doob Snacks. I mean, Curios getting KO'd there isn't the end of the world. We already saw their uh, respawn timer is like 26 seconds. So picks here on any player on LG, it means their their uh, KO timer is massive. So Alma Avicinian has to keep that in mind and look for those opportunities because that is their way back into this. They need one big pick, one big catch. And they have a level 14 in Telion. In fact, the highest level on the map is on the side of Omo Abyssinian. This is definitely not over, but this is so incredibly difficult. If any team can do it, it is Omo Abyssinian, but if any key team can stop them, it's Luminosity, who's been stopping them all game. Rayquaza right, right. hits the map with a Sacred Sword, Rips right in the middle with the Curio. Curio's got the follow-up on the Talonflame. Hydro Typhoon comes up, kicks up two, but Rin is down. Can they get more? Curio's is heating up two players down. Omo Abyssinian needs to find more targets. Can they find one? Overlord's trying to eat this cotton ball. Or are they going to follow up? The pressure's on. Curios gets the Blastoise. I feel like Curios is this their game. They're getting that land buff here. Another KO streak of two. Three players down for Omo Abyssinian. And Luminosity doesn't even have to touch this Rayquaza. Luminosity does not need Rayquaza right now as multiple members of Abyssinian are down. They are respawning. However, we still have a Unite move on the Talonflame. But we have two Unite moves on the side of Luminosity. One on that Comfey. That Comfey is going to be able to keep Overlord alive almost no matter what is going to be thrown at him right here as Trevenant finds him there in the tall grass and we're looking to see how this fight is going to play out. Omo Abyssinian is so far behind. They need to make a Hail Mary play. Pick up some massive KO, KO and they you. start with the Mew. Oh, they're, Overlord's trying to go in. They're trying to protect the rest of the time. They're starting to eviscerate and they're starting to eat. Unite move comes out. They're going to go for the follow-up. Blast was the next one up. They're lining up. KO Shrika 2 on the Eligals. Following back the other way. We're just keep pushing slashes on top of the Blast Toys. And now we're looking at the town play. We're darting back through. Rin takes care of the trap. Four players down. Oh, come on. Give me all five players down for that ace. You can't break the wind. You can't smash a mountain. You can't bury the sea. And you can't stop LG. That's an ace in game three of the Pokemon Unite World Championship Grand Finals. Incredible as the points rain in on this main goal zone. Luminosity with a flawless performance here today. 2-0-ing every single team on their way to the Grand Finals as they just put on an absolute clinic. One of the best performances I've seen in Pokemon Unite. And that was a statement. That was a period. The best team in the world. Two years in a row. Luminosity from North America. Let's go. LG stands for let's go. You're not wrong there, Spraggles. LG said making it back. We never left. Are you joking? LG has not looked like this team at all this year. They didn't look like it yesterday either. They woke up to say and say, oh yeah, we are the best. We are built different. That crown never left our head. And remember who's sitting on the throne. Look at this here, and you can feel it from this stage. An absolutely dominant performance from Luminosity. <laughs> I love Curio so much. I just love the emotion. And of course, they're feeling it right now because somehow they have done the impossible. Somehow they have won the Pokemon Unite World Championships for two years in a row. And let me tell you, year two was quite different here, Dupes. Next yeah. year two had their ups and downs. Year two was turbulent for Luminosity, but it wasn't today as they came back here and they did this in dramatic fashion. Ironically enough, the region that gave LG the most trouble all year long was on their home turf in NA. The other teams in NA fell by the wayside and LG said, oh, all of you are gone? Too easy. Let's get it back. Unbelievable stuff here from Luminosity. I think we all expected the world champs to look amazing here in Yokohama, but I don't think anyone knew what that was going to look like. I don't think anyone recognized how dominant they were going to be. <laughs> Yeah, that game was uh, that game was a championship performance. Uh, I mean, that's a nice little slope. I'm going to compare it to our background. That's a nice little Mount Fuji type crest there out of LG. And take a look there, that orange line. That might be the Marianas Trench. You might have been right there, Dupe Snacks. If you could have gotten lead. negative points, we might have gotten there. Let's take a look at these numbers. Overlord 88K matched by Curios, who came unglued in game three. Come on, let's go. Everybody stepped up this game, and it shows LG 
in true form. Incredible stuff from Luminosity right here as we take a look back at this last match. You know, this is a highlight reel, but I think you just cut to any moment in this match and see a highlight reel from Luminosity. Yeah, when you have to give credit to Oma Abyssinian, they did take every opportunity they had. They got two good KOs on Overlord, tried to leverage those, but couldn't quite piece it all together. Of course, by that time as well, the score lead is so high that you put back against the wall, you've got to try to make plays, and sometimes when you force plays, there's none to be found. And here we go. We just see points raining in into this Tier 2 goal zone, and it felt like this match was really over from the beginning. I don't know if Omo Abyssinian just realized they couldn't beat the champs, or if it took this match to really prove it to them right here, because this was just an absolute disaster for Abyssinian, and such a champion performance from Luminosity. There is no team that wins harder than Luminosity wins. I mean, we said it, we saw it. They smelled blood in the water and they knew this was their game to win and they did not relent. Counter to everything else we've seen this year, when we, they've smelled blood in the water, they've overextended. But this time is cold, calculated, pursuing their prey, delivering a win in a big time fashion. You know, we talked a little earlier, Doob Snacks, about some teams being nervous nervous and the big stage and what it does to you. Let me tell you what it does to Luminosity is it absolutely energizes them. It brings them to another level that we have never seen before. A more dominant performance somehow than last year. I don't know how it's possible. That's the first smile I've seen from ELO since the last time they were at the World Championships. I mean, we've got an interview, of course, with our winners here. Zoinks is on stage with LG. Zoinks, interview this World Championship team. Thank you so much. One more big cheer for Luminosity Gaming, your champions here on the world stage. An amazing tournament from you, and obviously the story here is back-to-back -back world championships. This is almost unheard of in the world of esports, much less Pokemon Unite. Elo, how does it feel to get that world championship trophy two years in a row? I mean, yeah, it feels really great, and uh, I don't know. Uh, our team didn't have the cleanest season this year, but I think like all the hardships we went through uh, just made us uh, play better. And we really showed up today. I'm really proud of the whole team. Well, they proved it here today. I think Overlord, you had one game dropped all tournament long, the first one. But after that, it was locked in. How did you turn that mentality around to a dominant tournament run? Uh, I think first set, we were definitely still uh, nervous. You know, we hadn't played on world stage in over a year. But, uh, you know, as teammates, you know, we pick each other up. We make sure we're all playing. As best we can, we're locked in, and uh, after that, it was wraps. Kyrgios, you just mentioned, or Elo just mentioned that this was a season full of ups and downs, but now you stand here on this stage, world champions. How much does that mean to you to win with this roster of five that has been through so much together? Um, so, uh, I think um, what really, what, like why it meant so much to us is because a lot of people um, really had faith in us and really thought that we could still make it happen. And I think the people who had the most faith were, you know, family, friends, fans, who all thought we could still make it happen. And there are a lot of people who doubted, including myself, um, but we really pulled through. We went through a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, conversations and it really just means so much because we were able to make it happen with um <laughs> Two years in a row, they made it happen. Now, this tournament run was on the back of some incredible games, back-to-back, -back, macro gameplay, draft, micro, everything looked amazing. Slash, what was the secret sauce here for Luminosity Gaming to have such a dominant tournament run? Lapras. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Yes, I mean, Big Brain Slash on the case. I'd love to hear it. Rin, obviously, it was mentioned already. Luminosity Gaming, you all have a whole lot of supporters. You got some doubters, but you proved everybody wrong here. What do you want to say to the people out there that have been with Luminosity Gaming through thick and thin, all these people here that have been cheering you on all tournament long? Any words for the fans? I mean, without the fans, we can't be here, so I love all of you. I actually do.
We can't do what we do without you guys. Much love for everybody at home and here cheering them on. Can we get one more big round of applause for your world champions, Luminosity Gaming! Amazing stuff from this team. Let's take it back to Spraggles and Doom Snacks. Wow, uh, Curious got me crying about Pokemon Unite up here. Who doesn't cry about Pokemon Unite? Oh, I mean, I do all the time when I'm playing solo queue, but I'm talking Retweet. about achieving something in Pokemon <laughs> Unite. Unbelievable stuff here from Luminosity. Let's take a look at how we got here, how Luminosity got here to the World Championships, how they got to the Grand Finals as they walked through this bracket, 2 0 -ing every single team, and then a Finals 3 0. And there were so many amazing teams, Dupe Snacks. All amazing teams that fought hard to get into this day, too. Let's talk about uh, Omo Abyssinian, of course, taking out Zero Zero Nation, who dispatched Tally Bobo Believers, a lot of people's favorite to win this event. LG dispatches them in the semifinals, and they begin their run. Agil then moving on to MJK, of course, Ayasumi Macro as well. 2-0, 2-1, 2-1. Meeting, unfortunately, LG, who is just on a different level and on a different plane today because they transcended at whatever they left behind yesterday into what they are today, and they got folded. LG takes this thing 3-0 in our grand finals, of course. No reset necessary. An incredible stuff here from so many different regions. When you look at our top eight, we have almost eight different regions right here. The only region effect to bring two competitors here was Japan, and Japan was playing so amazingly well this weekend. Oyasumi Makaro and MJK. I don't know which uh, you were a bigger fan of, Dupe Snacks. I'm a huge MJK guy myself. I thought they were absolutely amazing, but Makaro was putting on quite a show beating teams handily throughout this tournament. Yeah, of course, a couple stumbles on Oyosumi Makaro's side, a little bit of a couple hills to climb, if you will. Uh, they didn't just climb them, they absolutely leapt over them, landed far off into the distance and crushing it. Of course, that leaves still our top two teams, however, of course, Alma Abyssinian and Luminosity and break down that money. Take a look at this, a $500,000 prize pool here at the Pokemon Unite World Championships with Luminosity taken home. Is that $100,000? That is $100,000. That's so many thousands of dollars. Omo Abyssinian, $75,000 for second place. Oyasumi Makaro, $65,000. And as you see heading down here, huge prize payouts to our top eight teams. And even our top 16 teams getting a nice chunk of cash and getting a trip here to Japan. Yeah, I mean, tip of the cap to LG, representing not only their sponsor, but themselves as the previous world champions maintaining that crown to themselves let's take a look at some highlights of this LG team yeah incredible stuff here out of this series you know Omo Abyssinian was very close in a lot of these games here this was when they had not decided who was gonna win this first game 0-0 right now between Luminosity and Omo Abyssinian and then we have this amazing moment here near the end of the match just tons of big big moments for both of these teams we can see somehow the single auto attack the basic attack here from the Inteleon able to secure that just insane stuff from Kyrgios I mean you can see actually all the players on Luminosity in that game were kind of sandbagging that Rayquaza and just waiting to press their buttons and it obviously totally panned out here we had that awkward Hydro Typhoon out of Rin and they put in their back of their mind well I better be a hero now as the pressure's all of a sudden on and they're coming through and Boosted auto sealing that thing up for LG again. You never quit. You keep hitting Rayquaza, and that's what Rin did. Look, he's just hoping that that Hydro Typhoon is out of everybody's mind after they just became the <laughs> world champs here. It's definitely out of my mind for sure. And of course, celebrating there is like, yes, I don't have to explain the Hydro Typhoon. <laughs> I won that game with a boosted auto. Now we're on to game three. And this is where everybody hit peak form, peak stride. They were off to the races. They saw the finish line, and they did not let up. Yeah, and this was a moment where I think Omo Abyssinian 
really realized the task that was ahead of them. They really realized who they were playing inside of this match as it felt like Luminosity was just showing everyone what they can do. They were showing them that even when they're going up against clearly one of the best teams in the world, they can win like this. And win like this indeed, dominant fashion, much like we saw last year in this same position in the grand finals, just absolutely attacking their prey, dismantling their opposition and getting a good win. I don't know how much bigger of a win you could dream up here, but LG just delivered. Incredible stuff right here as we just see Luminosity picking up KO after KO. Dumping points into this goal zone. There is no Rayquaza needed. The countdown right here as Luminosity is once again crowned the champion. One thing that I noticed this year from last year and this year from their other stage play that we've seen them is they remained focused and we, we knew Curios from the pop-off, right? We see that in every highlight video. Of course, Overlord getting player of the game, no shock there. But my point being is they stayed calm, collected, composed, and they popped off once the job was done and they were champions. This is a new one on broadcast here. Overlord, actually, the player of the game. 88,000 damage, 192 scores, six KOs. You know what? Keep an eye on this kid. I think he might be going somewhere, Doom Snacks. It's funny. That's exactly what you said last year in the same position because Overlord keeps getting player of the game. And uh, you know what? It's been a year. You can recycle that joke. Nobody will catch on except for me. Beautiful stuff here. I'm so happy that Doopsnex was able to call that out. We are going to be sending this over to the main stage here in Yokohama as we are going to be crowning our champions. This crowd is so excited. Let's hear it one more time for your world champions. These teams have really given it all they have, and they have shown us some great games, both here and if you're watching from home. Let's say thank you to these teams for an amazing set of games. Pokemon Unite requires the utmost in teamwork, coordination, and skill in order to be the very best, and these teams have shown us just that. Now it is time to officially crown them as our finalists and world champions of 2023. So. Joining us to present the awards, please welcome Mr. Ishihara, President and CEO of the Pokemon Company. And also Pikachu. Welcome. Now, first, congratulations to our second place finalist, Omo Avicinian. With Luis. And Tempest. Shua. And Miva. Once more for Omo Abyssinian. And now it is time to crown our 2023 Pokemon Unite World Champions, Luminosity! With Ren! Slash! Kyrgios!
once more for Luminosity. Congratulations to both of our teams.